All right, I'll call the meeting to, to order. We're going to skip down to just the um, discussion on the South Peak water tank. I would invite everybody here, if they want to just come up and sit at the table and sit in front of a microphone and let's have a joint discussion here. And Sean, you're welcome to join us up here if you want, or or the peanut gallery, whatever you <laughs> All right. Scott, can you just confirm that you can hear us? Because we had some audio difficulties at the last meeting. I can hear you very well. Thank oh, you. Oh, and we can Excellent. hear you. This is great. All right. So, so Scott, um, we had a meeting with um, the Forest Service on Friday. And there's certainly been some developments that we need to make you aware of and that we need to talk about. And... Um, uh, Sam Kenny from Weston and Sampson, who's been the en our engineer on the project, was al also obviously at the meeting. And uh, I'm going to let him update all of us, even though some of us were there, but update everyone. And then we can go forward with a, a, a where do we go from here discussion. So, Sam, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, OJ. And uh, hi, Scott. Nice to talk to you again. Hey, Sam. Um, so uh, I'll kind of give a, I guess, a, a brief recap um, and then kind of put it back to the, the the town for additional comment. But effectively, we were able to meet with Forestry Service on Friday, uh, kind of as discussed, um, where we received, frankly, a, a litany of comments and input from those folks on the design as it currently stands. Um, so uh, effectively, I, I believe really everything that was provided to us in terms of, you know, comment or requests for, for clarification or additional information, I'd say really everything we heard is actionable and achievable. Um, there's nothing in there that leads me to believe that we can't accomplish that task. Uh, I think the largest takeaway is forestry service is projecting a need to take a step back and reinvestigate some things. So what I heard was, a bunch of items that are again actionable and achievable uh but likely an impact to overall schedule um that may not be able to be fully quantified right now uh so i also think one thing that's being noticed as well is throughout the the process and this and accommodating all of the permitting requests all of the requests from interested parties throughout the design process is definitely leading to an increase in the overall project cost as well. So I think that's just the the status, the state of the union as it is right now, is that the schedule is expanding based on input provided and the cost for the project yeah. uh, is getting high to accommodate all of the requests we have received on this project to be incorporated. Yeah. Sam, if I can ask you, if I may, Mr. Chief. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Sam. You know, what has caused the Forest Service to do this turnaround? I mean, I thought we had almost agreed and we were ready to get in the ground, so to speak, and start the roadway up there and go forward. And why? Yeah, I don't want to speak di directly to them, but the largest change that's occurred effectively from the introduction of the discussion to today is we actually did the design. Um, you know, what was put on paper and what was discussed with these folks, you know, throughout the initial preliminary design process was, here's what we think this project may look like. We need to go out and actually do the field investigations to inform our actual design. What the field investigations are telling us is that we're constructing on a mountainside. There's a lot of slopes and the soils aren't particularly amazing. So in order to accommodate that actual design, we needed to expand the footprint of the road. And that expansion is primarily what's giving them heartburn at this point is because they thought there was a more compact footprint to the project than is being displayed right now. Yeah. You would think that the, you know, forest service would want less disturbed and more disturbed if feasible and safe, obviously. Um, makes no sense to me. What about you? Does it make sense to you? In a short answer, you know, we presented this design because it, provides better mitigation to wetlands impacts. It provides, um, you know, better storm water management. It achieves those high level objectives that, you know, are usually the comments you receive on 
on permitting and project viability ones. Does it increase the overall footprint? Yes. Um, do we think it is an environmentally more friendly design? Yes. Essentially, the footprint went from 1.6 acres to three. The footprint, the footprint on the forest service portion of the project. Double. Double. Yeah. I mean, when you look at it in in, in Grand Scream. Raw, raw numbers, it's 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 another acre on a I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of acres they, they have there, but it's an acre. Right. Um and as, on a, as Sam said, it, it's an acre that um mitigates some of the other issues that we're running into with wetlands and you know erosion and stormwater and all that other stuff. Right. So that was kind of my takeaway of that meeting was that that you know the initial let's get the conversation started was a drawing that showed where we had to begin and an idea of where we could end up, which we didn't end up there. Um, and it started a discussion about is there a better place for the tank location? which they believe there was, so we moved it. Is there uh, a ways to avoid wetlands, ways to you know, make it a better, um, uh, less erosion, uh, less runoff, created less stormwater management practices? Just is there a better way to do it? And I thought from that discussion, we had a buy-in to the whole concept the, the problem, at least my understanding of the problem, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not up on engineering and all the lingo, but the way I see it is that they they did that NEPA review of this of this 1.6 acres. Now the road is, is over here and the tank is over here and there's, there's things outside of what they reviewed. So they're saying, we got to go back to step one and do a NEPA review that includes these areas that we moved into based on their input and the input of all of the specialists who wanted less steep roads, uh, the tank over here, et cetera. Um, so, so although I understand why they're doing it, it seems we went to the table with a concept. We changed that rough concept based on input. And now they're saying, okay, you got to start over because when they did the review, they didn't do it outside of that thing. The NEPA review, as I understand it, can be of two kinds and they have different letters and I forget what they were, but one was like the short form and one was the long form. Yeah, you're talking categorical exclusion is the shorter of the two. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, what was that, Sam? Categorical exclusion or CE is the easier, easier of the two, the shorter of the two. That is what the... Um, for lack of a better term, the original layout received a categorical exclusion from them. Uh, the other one is um, I always space with the in EA or environmental assessment, which is the next the next layer of difficulty. But the the EA introduces a lot of public input into the the process, a lot of comment periods, and requires additional investigation. Um, if, if I may, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I gathered as well is. Um, when Brooke, the district, uh, I believe she's the district ranger, correct? When she was explaining um, the reason for the, um, basically the begin again of the research, what I remember her saying was, if they don't do the same thing they did for the 1.6 acres, if they don't do that, the additional 1.4, then they put themselves into a possibility of violating a federal law is what I got from that because they didn't look at all these specific things. So if they found some kind of an archeological artifact or something that came about after the fact and they did not do this, then that their heads. That's the Gavin. Yes. And then that's agree. Point. Yeah. Uh, um, there was there was two laws. One we believe the other was special animals or yeah, species. species species yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you're right. So so they're covering their means. Yeah, they're they, following uh, their bureaucratic process to a T. Right, right. So so I guess they're doing what they have to, but what it means is we're basically starting this whole process over. If we move forward, we're starting it today. Um. 
And as I understood the process, you would need, let's, let's call it 30 days to um, respond to those. You said there was everything on that list was actionable and achievable, but you need to do it. So 30 days, let's call it that. Then I believe she said it would take them a couple of months to review those changes and then determine aspects are going to be the CE and what, if any, are going to be the EA. So there's another two months. Um, then we would have to go through whichever NEPA process they dictate, which could take, and, and they told us that if you want this to move along, you, you know, you, the town, hires the independent consultants to do the NEPA um, investigation and analysis and let them just review the results. That could take numerous months. And I believe some of those, um, you know, might only take a month, but not January. It can't yeah. be the month. It needs to be the schedule of where we are in the calendar. Does not right, but it right. also needs to, doesn't it? With the with the actual people doing the analysis, need to be at least for some of them in the um, non snow yes season. Right. So so it might take them a month, but they might not be able to start until you know April or whenever they can access the the land up there. So so to get through that NEPA process is going to be is six months fair it, it could be longer especially if they push you into the ea category um eas especially with all of the uh you know mandated comment periods can easily take six to 14 months mm -hmm. depending on what comments you're receiving what level of input you're getting on review no, sam this review that will be done is it subject to change by the Forest Service? I mean, they don't just look at stamp and say it's fine because it came from your firm. I mean, their experts can say, no, we don't like this, we'd like that, go back and so yes. they, they have would, that power. It would be open for, for review and comment by yeah. the Forest Service. The only other al alternative to that though is to have them do the NEPA review process, which they said we would not even be able to get onto their calendar for our project review until October of 2025 to get on their docket of projects, um, which means we won't even have anything until realistically, let's be honest, early 26. We signed an extension with um, Health Peak until what date i well, i i don't know if scott do you have that date right off the top of your head i believe it was that the i believe that the construction and the tank needed to be online by the end of the next calendar year 25. december of 25. i i believe so um i can pull it up let me see if i can pull it up. So, Scott, do you have that date? I don't. I'm sorry, guys. I I I remember November of 24 as being one of the extension triggers, but I don't remember if it was beyond that. I think the so I think. Okay, my memory is coming back to me now. So I think there's two things. I think there's the developer's agreement, which I think Scott is correct, ends. Um, I think that there's a developer's agreement, which I think has an end date in 2024. And then there's the letter of credit that we also have. And I think the letter of credit has an end date of 2025. Because I remember we had reached out to South Peak a few months ago, probably earlier in the summer, and said, hey, we realize that the developer's agreement is expiring. Do we want to extend it? 
what is the status of that? And I don't think we ever received a response from South Peak on that. Um, and then I'm almost positive that the letter of credit is a year later than the developer's agreement. Sent it on May 10th. I did. Okay. So that's when it expired in November of 2023. So you must have renewed it for one a year. year. Yeah. So November of this year. So. <clears throat> Um, so this says, um, came to our attention that we may need a formal written extension. So I sent this to uh, Mark and uh, Derek Lick. Scott, you weren't on it, so we can't blame you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on May 13th, and it said, uh, it came to our attention that we need a formal written extension for the water tank construction per the supplemental development agreement, see attached section five. We understand that the letter of credit also attached extends the timeline to get the tank online until 11, 10, 25. However, we just want to make sure that we're complying with the agreement and all parties are on the same page. So I do believe that Scott's correct that the development agreement is set to expire this year. The letter of credit would be set to expire next year. November of next year. For the letter of credit. Letter of credit. Right. So... You know this this timeline is is kind of open ended. I mean, I I, I think you can get the, the first month project done. I would hope Brooke can get the the Forest Service to agree what kind of NEPA process we need to go through in the next you know two months after you submit everything. But then again, that NEPA process, if it's the short form, which the last one was. Well, and I would be very hopeful, but then again, you know, I thought we were almost done the whole process anyway, yeah. but I'd be hopeful that we could go through that short process again. I mean, there was nothing significant that they found. I know um, a lot of the, um, what do you want to call them, weighed in on slope and runoff and this, and that that's kind of what led to the, to the changing of where the road is, changing of where the tank is. Um, that that's all been vetted out. All they should be doing now is looking at, okay, are there any, you know, species or archaeological or, or, you know, wetlands that we didn't find the last time that are outside of that, that footprint. Um, barring nothing bizarre, it seems like we should be able to go the short route, but the short route is still going to be <laughs> multiple months because again, if, if someone can't even start their study until the snow melts, you know, and 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 we know from Brooks' description of their workload that they're not going to be able to drop everything and and review something as soon as we get it to them. Um, it could still take a year to get through from from now until the NEPA process is done, and we're back to where we are now. Could take another year. Correct. If we have to go to the long form, it could go beyond that. But that's going to put us basically from now until, let's say, next October with no Depends. real progress over where we thought we were today. It would just be redoing that NEPA process, um, agreeing on the 90% uh, drawings engineering, and, and then start with, um, I guess, bidding out the um, road, roadway first. Or the whole uh, the whole project and but start building the roadway first. Yes, you would construct construct the roadway first to access the site. I mean, it, so how the project is ultimately bid is a discussion that can be had, you know, with with the town. However, the difficulty in segmenting a project like that is the road has to come first, and then from a financing perspective, breaking that with the tank, the the road to nowhere is is kind of the, the phrase that gets used on the engineering side with these tank projects, especially when the road component ends up being very expensive is you don't, don't want to drive yourself into a situation where you can construct the road and then don't have the money to finance where the road is supposed to go. Is the new 1.3 acres or 1.4 acres that have entered into this, the equation here, is that all owned by South Peak or is some of it, under agreement to loom for ski area terrain? The 
for purposes of the acreage discussion, that entire three acres versus 1.6 acres is just on forestry service land. Okay. Um, they, they being forestry service are not counting or looking at the private land at this time. It has expanded on the private land as well, though. It belongs to that. Uh, South Peak. South Peak. Yeah. But, the, but the, the agreement with South Peak that we have was very flexible. I mean, we started out right with a, with an agreement that, you know. We had a temporary easement area. Right. And then when it, we expanded, we did touch base with South Peak and they were willing to work with us, you know, to a certain extent to be able to make sure that the road could get accomplished. Right. They've been very accommodating, I think. Yeah. Right. So, so um, knowing that this is, is basically gonna take one year to get back to where, or I shouldn't say one year, at least one year to get right. back to where we are We're today. Treading, today. Treading water, literally, yeah, yeah. for at least a year. Right. We'll we'll be having things get done, but it's just things that we thought were already to bring us back check, to where we checked thought off we were. the checklist. Right. So so it's going to take a year, and and there's there's uh, two big things is that for the selectman to decide what to do. One is South Peaks position on this delay and then two northern borders position mm -hmm. on this delay we have a next question we have a matching grant that was extended this would be this would be our third extension yeah this would be our third third time asking for an extension and i don't know if they would honor it again um because the first time we got this was in pre-covid and they kind of want these funds spent at this point so i mean it's definitely worth an ask, but there's no guarantee that we would get that extension. Hopefully we could present. Yeah, we could. The, the, the I think we have a strong, process. yeah, I think we have a strong so, argument. So it's like not, done it. no, and it's not like the town is just kind of sitting on its hands and not trying to push this project along. Essentially the delay is totally outside of our control. Got the old expression goes, time is money. Um, obviously, there's increased cost here. Any idea with new location of tanks, new roads, et cetera, et cetera? Sam. Wait, you're talking Sam. Sam. Uh, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm with you now. Maybe I, we'll I, let Scott answer. No, Scott's like, don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think that is a legitimate you know, question as well. I mean, granted, you've asked me what, what I think the price is and, and kind of what I had said to Nate when I walked in five minutes before this start, it is, you know, really sitting down and looking at the cost today to actually construct this project. It's getting expensive. It's already to the point where I'd like to, my challenge at this point would be how to value engineer it better now. So I, I do think there's a question there is, the site is great. Uh, I think it's worth the time that the town has invested, um, but it's it's tough to access. It's an expensive project. And I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't want to make you nail down a number, but I think we need to be realistic. This project is not getting done for three million. This project is getting not getting done for four million. So now we're now we're talking about the four to five million dollar price range in which the town doesn't have committed to water funds. At the three million mark, we could use water tap fees and we have that cash in the bank. And with the MBRC grant, we had we had well beyond our share to cover it. Um, once the, you know, even at four million, by the time it gets built, are we gonna have it in the in the in the water sewer tap fees? Potentially it'd be close, but tighter, but we will have to most likely go to town meeting and raise appropriate funds at this point, especially if we're now talking about a construction season that's 25, 26, 27. It's more likely 26 is a construction season, right? So that's another two full years. You got 6% inflation if you're doing three, you know, if you're doing 3% a year. So um, that's something I think we all have to kind of, decide on whether it, that's that's even feasible on our end. Scott, so one of the beneficiaries of this is obviously South Peak and construction building multi-million dollar homes over there. How much more are we willing to be kicking in here? 
Oh, it's box money. So, you know, how much more is Mark going to throw in? I'll have to consult. With, I'll have to consult with Mark and get back to you. I don't think I have the authority to give you that answer. Yeah, I, I didn't think you would. And and um, <laughs> you know, honestly, my my thought for tonight's meeting is this: this is the time for everybody to understand where we're at. Um, not necessarily for decisions. Maybe we can talk about options, but um, I, you know, I'm I'm not expecting a decision from you any more than I'm expecting the board to make a decision. You know. We need to know, um, you know, where what South Peak's position is on this, um, you know, both time and money. Um, you know, the expectation was that that you know South Peak would pay for the size and location of a tank that's required of them. Um, but again, I'm you know, we talking twenty twenty six dollars, or are we talking, you know? 2023 dollars because you would have built this last year if if we hadn't asked you to delay um so i think that's that, that's one question the second question in my mind is is what's northern board is going to do will they will they give us another delay or are they going to add you know five hundred thousand dollars to the cost of this even before we talk about what the real new cost is um and then then if we did don't move forward, I guess, yeah, looking at, at the other options we have, you know, if this is a, let's call it a four and a half million dollar project. Honestly, I want to prepare you for the fact that it may be more. Okay. Let's say, let's say five. We need a number just to even have a discussion about is, is for $5 million, where would we spend that elsewhere to accomplish what we're accomplishing we, with the location of that tank at that elevation we're um feeding the high what's now the high pressure zone over at south peak and and, and um everything else over there we're providing a backup for the forest ridge tank in the main pressure zone and with with pressure reducing valves we're providing a backup to the loon village tank zone correct yeah, so without kind of going going off the deep end with engineering specifics, that the reason the, the forestry service site has been selected is to match the grade line of your existing Loon Village tank, um, which is your your highest grade line kind of in the, the core system at 1266. That allows the tank to then, you know, via gravity and pressure reducing valve, take over um, the South Peak pressure zone, effectively eliminate use of the, the booster station in South Peak, provide fire protection to the South Peak area, which the booster station currently does not provide and give you supplementary fire flow into your main service area downtown. Um, you know, I think the modeling is plus or minus 400, you know, GPM that would be available to supplement, you know, firefighting activities, or emergency activities. And and so I think that that our, our again, uh, ability to, solve all of those problems is pretty limited with a single tank. You know, we're really talking about three different zones. It It is a very unique project. Yeah. Uh, I, there's nothing I like better than showing up at public meetings and talking about the cool engineering things that, that we do. That this, this project is, you know, one of the, the greater kind of, remakings for a positive of a distribution system that that i've seen um it's really neat you can often solve a storage problem by instituting a tank you can sometimes solve two never really attempted to to maybe do three uh it, it is a very cool project but i think i think the feedback from forestry service and and the cost to incorporate all of the requirements to utilize that site it's a little bit of a sobering reality at the same time and and for the discussion of South Peak, you know, looking at it from their perspective, um, you know, they're building houses like crazy over there, and they're limiting it to what the booster station can currently serve. Um, and I think the the biggest aspect of that is is um, fire protection. What would be the feasibility of putting in and, and even if, and, and again, we can't make this decision because 
we can come up with a great idea and South Peak could say, yeah, no. But is is there is there um any option as far as for um in the temporary stage putting um underground cisterns up at elevation X to at least handle um fire protection? The the short answer is I, I don't know a ton about using cisterns as fire protection. It's just not a, a core competency area for me. So I don't I don't want to mislead you um on on that response. Do okay. I think there's a way to provide fire protection to South Peak, but potentially yes. Uh exactly how that happens. I, I would just need more information. Well and, and Nate and I also touched briefly upon this this morning. Um we do now know that what we thought was potentially impossible with Moon's snowmaking lines and hydrants is possible. So we may be in a better shape already than kind of the shape that we thought we were in. Will it help us to the extent of the elevation that potentially is needed? I don't know, but I think it warrants more investigation because at one point we thought that wasn't a viable option and now we're realizing that potentially it may be a viable option. So yeah, talking potentially, um putting power to moon snowmaking <clears throat> that's at those higher elevations that could then be utilized possibly in fire suppression or firefighting? Originally, um, the fire department wasn't sure if they were going to be able to draw water from those, yeah. those snowmaking hydrants, um, which are located on the lower road on, on you know, South Peak Road. Right. Um, now that they know that they can successfully pull fire protection water as much as they could really need, that just opens up the potential for more protection, protection. on the lower half of that road. Um, it also gives them the option where they can fill trucks closer to the closer fire to. if they had to without having to, you know, go to a hydrant somewhere in town or, you know what I mean, or they could fill trucks quickly that way it, it just gave more of an option i think right but I, you know i'm not a, i'm not going to speak on the fire department's mm -hmm. behalf. right and and obviously not to the extent that a brand new you know tank would but are are we in such a dire strait as we originally thought we were i think is i guess to be determined okay so i mean you know in my mind that would be a, a, a real important option to look at because I can't speak for Mark or Scott, but you know, if their option is they can't build any houses over a thousand feet or whatever the that number is, um, for now another two years, um, the decision might be different if we know that. Well, we know that this the the loon system can push more than ample water to that intersection down there because we've just proved it. But with the two, there's two fire hydrants in South Peak, correct? If, I mean, um, snow making fire hydrants. I think there's three. My, I think there's three. Well, but but one's one's down. Yeah, there's four. I think there's four additional ones. I think one's down by Jean's Playhouse. Jean's Playhouse. And I believe that there's three on that side of the on that way? side of the okay. Way. Okay, I thought there was only two, but I mean, I don't. I, that's just what I've been told. But I'm, I'm two others. I think there's three others. Okay. There was two. Okay, so so there is a there's either at least two. If there is not a possibility, yeah. and and I'd want I'd want Ron to weigh in on this, right? But there is a possibility that that with that system in place, the um, shuttling of water and or the pumping directly from uh, uh not from that hydrant into a truck and up the hill um, could provide sufficient firefighting water for them to continue with their with their um development at whatever pace they want and that this would not slow it down it's, there's a potential, potential. I mean, there's no guarantee i'm not saying that is right that's but that's one of the options that we would right. need to explore. and and maybe it wouldn't get them to the elevation that we were striving for the 1200 mark but it might be able to get them past the 1,000 1, mark, right. So is there a possibility of the alternative sprinkling requirement sprinklers in the building? 
I mean, that's something that, you know, Mark or Scott would have to make a decision on that. See if that would allay the fears that we, Nate has, you know, and our fire department has. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing right now in the landing. In the landing. We're requiring, um, again, it doesn't, those all solve South Peaks problems. Um, it doesn't give us the additional fire flow and waterfall. But we also know that we're going to, potentially need water in other areas of town um right. it's campers world i mean no we all know that water is going to have to go in there at some point and it may be an improvement on our system or it may be improvement on a de private developer system but um i think it's something that we got to look at as a whole you know it's not not great <laughs> But I think we all need to be on the same page. South Peak needs to understand where we're coming from. The town needs to kind of weigh the, our options. They need to weigh their options. And then we need to see if this is even a feasible project moving forward. Can we move forward as a private-public partnership? Or do we need to split ways? And then we need to reevaluate. They need to reevaluate what they're going to do. And we need to reevaluate what we're going to do. All right. Is there... Anything else that we need to talk about? No, I mean, unless Scott, do you have any questions? Um, no, not at this point, but I think your last statement is an accurate one from our point of view. You know, obviously we have, we were confident at the time that we could do our own tank on our own land to satisfy self peak. And we kept putting that off, you know, to partner with the town to get this this other tank. And now we, we've kind of put ourselves in a bad spot by sticking with this agreement. So um, I think that's what we have to evaluate as well on our end. Un understood. I mean, we understand yeah. exactly where you're coming from. I don't think, um, I think it's understandable. It's disappointing that it's taken us this long to get to this point. Great. So. All right. So, so, so I guess Scott, part of this future, the next steps is in your hands or you're, you're in Mark's hands to talk about it and, you know, see what you're willing or not willing to do. I think part of it is getting some sort of response from Northern borders and see, you know, if if they're still going to be on board or, or if they're going to, you know, not extend our grant for that. Um, and then I, I, I'm, I'm not sure we want to have you move forward with, with your responding to those litany of comments. I, I would personally agree. I mean, we'll, ready and able to do whatever the, the town wants, but I think the two questions you outlined are, are probably more important to answer at this time. And I also put on my just list too that I think we need to expedite the testing of the additional hydrants in South Peak to understand what their capabilities are sooner rather than later. I think that would be very helpful for South Peak for to South make Peak, a decision. Right. If, if they knew that they can build houses up to X elevation and and have firefighting capabilities at that level i i yeah that's i would think that would be an important part of their decision making so we can move forward with that yep and then i think internally we also have to have a discussion whether whatever self peak decides if self peak decides to continue on with this private partnership we need to have a discussion on whether we think the town would be willing to raise and appropriate more money in order to do so, because that means we'd have to go to town meeting next year to, in order to do so. To have funds in hand for when October comes or whenever the day comes that says you can go. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't push it off till the following year, you know. So. All right. I think that's... That's, that's it. it for South Peak. That's <laughs> enough. Uh, that's enough for right now. Yeah.
Thank you for coming in. All right. Before Sam goes, though, too, I just want to touch base on the uh, lead and copper stuff, too. Let's make this really pain. Hey, let's rip the band aid off. Let's, let's just go for the gold. Okay. <laughs> but I think you're all set, Scott, unless you want to stay on and for yourself. Uh, Scott, no, thank um, you. I'm good. I'll catch up with uh, Mark and we'll get back in touch with you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Any information you want from us to support that discussion, just just ask whatever. whatever okay. Needed. Um. So lead 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 service um is something I had mentioned to to OJ, Karina, and Nate after uh, the meeting with Forestry Service. Let me stop you real quick, yep. just to give a little background. So last year we got a fifty thousand dollar grant to do uh, a lead and copper inventory on all the water lines within the town that is something that's being mandated by the epa right am i right when i saying that the epa we have to have all of our lines identified the material of our lines identified by the end of 2027 right. yes yes so we got a grant for fifty thousand dollars through des last year weston sampson has been working on it with us to start inventorying those lines um as of right now we've gotten to about 50 percent you are probably closer to 40% that you can definitively say what they are. So um, yes, on, under that grant that DES had, had provided uh, financial assistance to a lot of you know, mid-sized communities like, like this, uh, utilizing primarily ARPA funding uh, as, as the mechanism for that. Uh, but the goal was requiring with EPA's um, proposed lead and copper rule change uh, that was initially announced in, in 2021. Um, from the town's water system construction, you are not a system that is likely to have any lead components. Um, it's just something that is seen in much older systems. You see it in 1900s, 1910s era infrastructure. Um, it's, that's primarily where those lead components come from. However, as part of the rule requirements, every community has to provide in inventory and identify the material of the service line, both on the public side, um, from the water main and the street to the curb stop, which usually denotes the right of ownership for a municipality, um, as well as the private side from that curb stop all the way into the, the private premise plumbing. Um, so those those two components are, are definitely um, complicated because a lot of communities have really good record on one and not the other. Uh, and to fully satisfy that requirement of definitively saying, we know for a fact the service line isn't led, you need to know both halves of that equation. So in initial review of the the data the town has, we're only able to say that for about 40% of your, your service lines, um, which would leave plus or minus a thousand that currently fall into an unknown category right now. While it's extremely unlikely any of them are actually lead components, the letter of the law for the rule right now says if it's unknown, it has to be treated as if it is lead until otherwise proven that it's not. Um, it has to be designated as having lead. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. You have to be. You have to provide that same notification to the private property owner your line is not identified definitively one way or the other. And you've noticed them until there is a change in that equation. Um, so it it's it's very difficult because again, it kind of puts the onus on communities like you to, to prove a negative of going out there and basically proving out what you can probably already kind of definitively know in your heart. <laughs> um, but what, for to give you an idea of timeline and what was discussed in terms of you know actionable items at this point, a baseline inventory of what you know for your service lines is due um, to DES, but every community in every state is due by October 16th. So within the next couple of weeks, you could submit an inventory that said everything was unknown. There's no requirement for what that is. It is a baseline statement of this is what we we're able to definitively say at this time. So that's right now where we're sitting of only about 40% of those will be completely identified non-lead. 
by the end of 2027, the requirement is for communities to have investigated those unknowns and to provide a definitive statement of they are lead, you know, copper, whatever they are. So the investigation phase is sort of the next part of this. Um, at this time, the state has mo money, has funding available to do that. Um, it's being offered through the SRF program. Uh, however, unlike the normal SRF process, there's no deadline on the application. It's a rolling application, meaning can be applied for any time. The rate limiting step for that is uh, a community needs authority to borrow to put forth that application. Um, hence, at the town level, warrant article voted on um, that would allow that. The positive right now is that that money seems to be available because folks haven't really been able to ask the state for it yet until basically this point. Uh, and right now, the state is offering um, through that program a 71% reimbursable loan as the, the funding mechanism, basically meaning if you're within the requirements of the loan and the scope that's agreed upon, 71% uh, of those funds will be loan forgiven. Um, so not not a bad current offer. So that's just the the guidance and, and the discussion that's happening at a lot of municipal levels right now is the longer this goes on into that investigation phase, the, the less funding may be available. Um, it's potentially a, a significant financial contribution. And, you know, we can talk specifics, but probably on the tune of one to two million dollars that you'd actually ask for to complete that process. And we would have to, even though it's a 71% loan forgiveness, we would have to raise and appropriate the whole amount at, at town meeting. So we'd go in asking for 1.5 or two. Um, you know, Sam said he put some estimates together, but he thinks that's what the, you know, the state's giving a average, what it would cost for each one. So that's what we're thinking um, at, at town meeting next year. Well, what is the process for the- uh, Sam. Um, yes, Sam. Those I'll just call you S, Mr. S. It's fine. Um, not Mr. K. Um, what is the actual process for the testing? Is it like a you know headset with a machine like we look for gold? And will it a, a, a reader tell you it's lead? Digging or, holes in the ground. Huh? Digging holes in the ground. Oh yeah. Yeah, pot potholing or vacuum excavation is probably the most economic first step for the town to take. Um, it basically targeted excavation that you can perform right at the curb stop and you pick that location because it allows you to see both the public and the private side. So you right get at the curb stop then. You get a two for one um, without having to fully excavate the entire premise of oh, it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, no I believe we only have to do a percentage. So if it's like on a road, on a main, like say Main Street, you wouldn't have to do every single service. Is a percentage yep. of services you would have to complete, oh. but not every single one. Yeah. Yep. It, it is likely if you have a thousand that you don't need to do a thousand, it may not be a direct 40%. It's going to depend a little bit how, how localized you are, how many services are in a direct area. But Nate, Nate's right. If you have 10 services that were all constructed in the same time and you kind of do that vacuum excavation process on four of them, there's a decent likelihood that you can make the case that the other six. Well, and especially place. with the density that we have right here in the village, right. you know, Nate has some potential cost effective ways that we could do that by hiring someone local and, you know, doing something along those lines. So it may not cost us to the extent of what is being suggested by DES or Weston Sampson, but it's, you know, we have to worse, we have to, prepare for worst case scenario. Sure. Um, and vacuum excavation is basically sucking the dirt up from around the curb stop down six feet or whatever that. Yep, right to the bottom so that you can see both sides of you that. You can see valve. both pipes coming out of the Correct. curb stop. They're both copper. Which they all are. Machine. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? It seems like we should have technology today. We should have a machine that that's what I thought. You know, like the ground. they can scan the camera into your body and see veins <laughs> and other things. 
And then when we could stick down there and say, oh, yeah, that's copper. That's copper. <laughs> that's yeah, like an that's, old ping noise. Yeah. That's not... I, would, would a water sample tell you the same thing of that specific curb stop, curb stop or unit of how we saw commercial building? Not unlikely definitively. So water sampling is being put out there as a tool more for identifying areas where you may have lead. So localized sampling is being used primarily in this effort to identify, okay, we think there may be some on Canal Street, let's pull sampling in that area versus a street two over that we know is all new copper. Are we seeing an appreciable difference in our lead and copper sample? So water sampling is being used more so to, to filter what areas you may want to target for further investigation. It's tough to definitively use it to to eliminate individual services. I mean, I I see you know, and you see it too. We we all see it. Reports, you know, of COVID in the water a discharge. So you know, I mean, if we can do that, why can't we do a similar whatever? One one thing too, Jack, is if if you like we do in this town, if we use if you use good pH adjustment with your um with your water, your treated water, yeah. Um, it won't allow the lead to precipitate into the water. Oh. So you could still have lead, but your water is in a, such a quality that it's not going to precipitate into the water where you wouldn't be able to test for it. Thank you. That's interesting. So that's more food for thought when we get into this. More good news. <laughs> Water meters. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we get into the 2025 budget discussions, um, it's probably something we should discuss. Water meters? I agree. At the very least, uh, the uh, grant program or the loan forgiveness program through DES. You know, what we had talked about on Friday is... Um, if we don't seize the opportunity and go for these grants sooner rather than later, we may get into a position where where the timeline comes down and it's a crunch for everybody to do it, that the grants get more competitive and there's less money to go around. So I don't believe this town's unique um, in a town of this size with its water system. I think we're everybody's having the same issue with this whole system, this whole situation. So there's going to yeah. be multiple towns competing for the available money. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean all this... most of those have meters. But, but honestly, that has. Yeah, but whether we have a meter or not meter doesn't, doesn't dictate what the connection is in the ground. Underground. That's true. That is. Right. Yeah, a lot of communities are at at the mercy of what records were taken in the past and whether someone thought it was important to write down the service material or not. That's the big thing too, what Sam just said. So, you know, there might be something in um, the town report that says, so in 1978, we replaced uh, the original water main on this portion of Main Street, but they didn't say what they replaced it with right. or that they said they replaced it with say asbestos cement. Well, that's fine. They didn't say what they were oh, gotcha. doing the service lines with, yep. which is the problem. Right. And we've had someone from Weston Sampson, a woman from Sam's office has been here a couple of days a week, looking through all of our old documents upstairs, trying to sift through to figure out as much as she can to identify as much as we can. Okay. So poor thing, I know. <laughs> it's been a long, they've been long days for her. I'll say that. Um, um, so I think at this point, well, just Sam, it's, you know, they said that they're drafting warrant articles for other communities. I think it would be good for us to just have that language on hand. So when we go into it, we know we know what we're going into, whether or not we decide to do it, at least we'll, you know, have everything we need. No. It's it's under mandate from under EPA. Mandate EPA would, right. If we didn't, um, we'd be in violation. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we'd I be think... under administrative order. I mean, we could push it off, but it's not going to, we could push it off, but. Gotcha. Right. If we have a really heavy warrant warrant this year, we could wait a year. We could wait a year, right? But again, it's going to be more competitive as, right. as the deadline gets closer. Close, right? And then you know, of course, you could also take the chance of defying the EPA right. DES 
but that's just plain stupid. Yeah, that's, yeah no, I agree. That's, like I said, yeah. they'll issue us an administrative order and, and then they'll just start tacking fines onto that. Right. Yeah. We do that, I'll just tell them that, that was OJ's decision. Yeah, we no. go to jail in that case, the town manager. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, not. I don't think not doing it is an option. It's. it's do you have any more great it? news for us? Yeah, I mean, Sam. What else? Yeah, bro. I'm going to keep. My How's the <laughs> great project going? Yeah. Uh, should be good, actually. <laughs> good note, then. Yeah. Uh, just, just so I can understand how we can best support you folks. Um, when when are you starting those budget conversations? Because I can prepare some draft warrant article language and more usefully a, a, like a cost estimate for you know how we're arriving at like a value dollar value for that warrant article what when are you starting that process well, when do i need to get you we'll probably start department heads usually mid to late october early november and then selectmen's usually november december we go over the budget and then we'll go to a budget committee in january so if we could have that by november we'd be in good shape yeah i think that's more than doable because what it does is it also aligns with that baseline inventory date on October 16th so we can see what the final count is and then we know what we're looking what our goal is yeah okay yeah not a problem um do you actually want a brief update on on route three sure <laughs> if it's yeah <laughs> no it, it, it should be. and on a high note Sam no, no yeah, I, <laughs> you don't wait. can't oh. get much lower so <laughs> you're good yeah the uh the, the general update there is it remains on target with what we discussed at the, the pre-construction meeting in, in mid-August. So they they being DeFelice Corporation, the, the contractor for that project is likely to uh, begin mobilization next next week, starting to bring some equipment up, some material up. Um, they'll probably start fusing their pipe and, and doing some activities like that. So they're likely to, to come into town over the next couple of weeks, do some select activity, uh, and then likely actually begin excavation probably mid middle of october um following columbus day do we know what end okay, they're starting at columbus day that's I believe their their goal was, as we discussed was to um see how much pipe they can get in the ground between voice brook and indian head sure and not disrupt disrupt indian head or parkers or anything above this season and then they'll jump right into it uh in the spring okay they're doing a winter shutdown sure and they're aware of the stupid traffic situation yes. in Lincoln on Columbus. Day. We made it very that clear that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it's going to be Every very single busy. person from yes. Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut comes here. Well, and they said they'd go as long as they, they could until D, D, DOT shuts them down. Sure, so. sure. Excellent. Good. Yeah. So that every, no, no changes from that pre-construction meeting. They remain on that, Good. that schedule. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thanks for the good news. <laughs> Had to be somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be somewhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you guys for your for your time and um, whatever additional info or however we can support you guys. I mean, it it it's a bummer. I I'm I'm individually bummed out uh, <laughs> that we're we're here where we are. But I think that conversation uh, is probably the right place to start what is the, the viability and sure. what's the path forward before um, we spend any more of the town's money. No, well, thank you for coming in. Appreciate thank your you time. Guys. Thanks, Sam. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Nate. Yep. You're done. You can leave. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> no, no, I'd make him stay. No, uh, he's missing a field hockey game. Oh, oh well, don't miss field hockey. He plays field hockey? Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a break. Okay, we're going to Take a two minute, two, two or three minute break. Is that okay, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam, thank you very much. That's one of the new shirts from this weekend? It is. Mm -hmm. I didn't get one. Got his fun. I had to go to the Highland Games. I was there. You did 20 bucks. Oh, okay. Selectman get free, I heard. It's <laughs> so <laughs>
Hey, I know. Shoot me. I know. Really. All right. Um, we called the meeting together at 4.30 um, and went right into a discussion with our uh, engineer about the South Peak water tank, the lead pipe investigation, and the Route 3 water main. Um, See, she's still recording. She didn't want it, did she? Uh, nope, she is still recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to go back to review and approval of the minutes from the September 9th meeting. Did anyone have any? I, have I had I'll nothing. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You want to second those? Second. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> All right, next um, is the land use fee schedule review and discussion. Yes. So uh, in your packet, you'll see um, I put together a spreadsheet with um, it's a, yeah, with a couple different boxes on it. Right. So um, we have been talking internally in the planning department um, in regards to our uh, 
land use permit schedule. Um, we've known for quite some, some time that our fees that we charge uh, in that land use permit schedule are substantially lower than what other communities are charging. So um, as an example, I put together the spreadsheet and um, the first box that you'll see, uh, the 2024-044 single family home and 2024-051 single family home. These are the two most recent single family home permits that came in within the last month and a half, two months. So they are the most recent. You'll see that the estimated cost for permit number 44 is 2.4 million with a square footage of 3,800, let's say for easy math. What we charge for that uh, Lincoln application fee was $350. Uh, if you go on to permit number 51, that estimated cost of construction is $950,000 with a square footage of 3345, let's say 335. Um, again, the Lincoln app fee for that was $350 because that's what we charge for a single family home. Below that are some communities in which I looked at and saw what they were charging for their land use fees. So you'll see for the towns of Lebanon, Waterville Valley, Conway, Sunapee, Wolfboro, Campton, and Thornton, um, what they would charge for a home of similar size and similar price structure. So each community um, does it a little different. Some communities do it by the cost of construction. Some communities do it by the square footage. Some communities have a, a flat fee plus either square footage or cost of construction. But if you look at these fees, what we're charging, we are exponentially lower. The lowest two building permits on spreadsheet are $600, which is nearly double what we're currently charging. So um, I personally feel that um, charging based on the estimated cost of construction is true is too arbitrary. Um, someone could say they're building a home for two million on the building permit sheet, but we're not collecting receipts. We're not, you know, we're not, it's hard to verify, exactly. What isn't hard to verify is the square footage of the home. So what I'm proposing is that we increase our land use permit fees to include some sort of formula that would be based on the square footage of the home. So the box on the right, and I only did it for the more expensive homes, so you could see what those calculations would look like. The box on the right um, would be our standard application fee at the 350 plus 10 cents a square foot that gets us to $730, which is a little bit closer to the low end of what some of the communities are charging. And then I kind of increased it, you know, by 10 cents, 20 cents, all the way up until option seven, where you see even at the most, I brought it to the $4,000 range. I, I personally feel that, you know, in Lebanon for that $2.4 million home, they'd pay $14,000 in building permit fees. I, I feel that's, really high, <laughs> um, but it's it's what they're charging. Even Waterville, Waterville does it by, yes. So we, it's double my highest proposal. So, I mean, we could drag this out. We could go as high as we wanted to. I just wanted to get some numbers on paper so you could see the difference between what our community is charging versus what other communities are charging. Um, also, they also are charging for water and sewer fees. They also are charging for building um, fire reviews and all that stuff. So this is literally just the permit application fee. So they're all communities on top of this 14 grand. They're also paying water and sewer fees and a fire department's review and other things. So, I mean, we could continue on up until whatever we felt was appropriate. Um, in order to make any of these changes, we will have to hold a public hearing. So I kind of just wanted to bring this to your attention and open it up for discussion. And then we can schedule a public hearing in the future to actually revise the fees. And we're thinking maybe it'd probably be best to start it on January 1. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know, but our current permit says that the cost and fees were effective in 2020. But I don't know if that changed. I don't know what was changed in 2020. You were in COVID. Yeah, I do, so I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know when the last time they were updated, but this 
current cost and fee sheet that we give to all of our applicants right now has an effective date of 2020. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, put on your microphone, Jack. We do. Secondly, I, I think uh, that the planning board, you know, should weigh in on this. Sure. I'd like to see something from them, um, you know, and let's see if we can get some measure of agreement and then put it uh, before, you know, a public hearing. See where we go. Yeah, I mean, I think the planning board definitely should weigh in with the understanding that it's a select board's right. purview to, decision. yeah. We're, we're exactly. But we want input. But we want input, right. What do they think is too high? What do they think is too low? Yeah. Wasn't the previous permit fee a flat $50 across the board for anybody and everybody and everything? See, I remember we, we've looked at water and sewer yeah, tap fees pretty those. Ex extensively. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I remember we changed those. We changed categories. We changed amounts. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember changing the actual application permit fee. We may have. Oh, we absolutely did. I remember arguing you like crazy we about did. renovating because you we added heated space and renovating a kitchen. And I'm like, you're not going to, I'm not telling you what I'm doing inside my kitchen and I'm not getting an application for it. If I want to rip all my cabinets out and put all new cabinets in, I'm going to do it. And I'm not applying anybody for it. And we had that huge argument right, about right. it. I remember the yeah, the, the that was when we did it. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember the, the discussion on, you know, I guess, it if how, what, what triggers an Adding a dishwasher, right. but right. not to include an extra. Right. Additional right. water and sewer hookups. Or, or, right. Remember the discussion. We totally read it. All of them. I remember the discussion yeah. on the application, not the fee. Let's see if you look. And I went through the whole Let's cost see. and fee sheet, and it's this is really the only one that I think is glaringly. Different dollar amounts to it. And it was like a fifty dollars because we have commercial, and then there's residential, and you can look at the whole thing. It's pages of it. It went from a very simple, easy, flat fee form to pages of check boxes and adding up and right. I hate it. So, so the one, the, these one and two family residential land use authorization permits finished volume to 350. Yes. And that's what we're you're basing this on. Correct. And then the renovations and additions, alterations. I remember talking about that. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> you were right. All of this is good, but, but I just didn't remember wait, what wait, this wait, was. Wait, wait. Can you say that? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I guess I, I just don't remember what it was before the three fifty. Was it a flat? I think it was like a flat fifty dollars. Yeah, I don't know, but I think no matter what. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was fifty. But uh, across the board, that if I wanted to build a deck, it was fifty dollars, and if he wanted to build that giant hotel, it was fifty dollars. Period. Wowzer. Yeah, and then we went to this. Well, my my goal for this would be to cover our town's expenses related to this well and that's okay. that was my goal with this as well is that this we administratively we spend so right. much time on these permits i mean we are now we're we not have covering a, our expenses we're not covering our expenses we now have a 40 hour a week dedicated job where in the previous position the previous was it was split between it was a half finance or half tax collector or half that didn't work in our favor Right. We now have a, a a dedicated position that works 40 plus hours a week just staring at these permits essentially <laughs> and making sure that these permits are being followed through, they're getting extensions, they're getting their LUCCs. You know, it's not just a let's take the permit and file it away in a cabinet. There's a lot of administrative work that goes into this and we're not covering our costs even close. Right. right. Which was kind of the catalyst for this uh, revision as well sure it just didn't hit the mark right well and if this happened 10 years ago right. 
the wages have increased exponentially. Like, I mean, yes. everything's just yeah. ballooned, yeah. you know? So um, I'm not asking essentially for us to make a decision today on what you think is an appropriate cost figure, but I think this needs to be a conversation. And I think we should probably want to, like you said, get the planning board involved and maybe schedule a public hearing or if we want to discuss it one more time or whatever the board sees fit. But I just wanted to make sure that we, we at least- I think we should definitely move forward. That's okay. question, yeah. And I would lean in favor of the higher end, option seven. It's still not gonna cover our costs, but we're gonna come a lot closer to it. Well, it'll be interesting again to see how many permits we did last year, what the total value of that would be on a new scale, what versus what the cost of operations are. I mean, you know, that can come from payroll or what have you, but uh, I'd be interested to see how many permits were actually issued. And, you know, we know multiply that by 350, you know how much it brought in. Well, it, it single family home permits, because right. as we mentioned, oh. some of these permits are only, you know, like, for the construction, they have their own formula. For the, you know, for the other small things, they have their own cost figure. This yep. would just be for single family homes. That's what I'm talking about, okay. single family. I mean, I've heard from developers themselves being, they're, they're shocked at how low, right? yeah, it's, our permit application Basically, fees. one of the developers prompted the discussion when we changed it. The last time. Because yeah. they thought, seriously? Right. $50. I mean, we're half the price of Campton. Yeah. And even and the and highest. They're, they're the second lowest on this list. The, the highest list. proposal is half the price of Waterville. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's what I said. I mean, we could, right. we, you could go on forever. I just wanted to show you yeah. um, using some of the square footage costs that some of the other communities were where we would fall in line. Yeah. And, and, um, I went out and did a, a tour of the town with, with Sean last week. That was, uh, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been on the planning board and the board of selectmen and we sit here and see what comes in for applications. And pretty much once those, you know, a, a planning, they get planning board approval or whatever, I'm aware of what goes on. I'm aware of the process, but, but I mean, the things that are out in the field that, that um, are happening or that were happening, <laughs> that are being um, handled. managed, yep. handled, you know, with, with some oversight now, uh, there's a lot going on out there. Yeah. And um, and that's costing us money. Mm -hmm. Very well spent money by all of us. Right. Yeah. right. But, but it's costing us money. As is, um, you know, Jade in the mm -hmm. office, Carol in the office. Mm -hmm. um, and even, even in Sean's position, I mean, we previously had a shared position with the fire department, right. it, you know, and um, if we, knowing in 2025 that some of these planning department budget numbers might need to change, this might help soften a blow a little bit. No, I agree. Thank you for bringing it. Well, do you want to go even higher? Just kidding. I would... I mean, we heard you. My my thought is is just cross one, two, and three off the list. Okay. Yep. Okay. Like those still are. are Get them out of here. You know, the town's going to lose money at those. At those. Yes. So somewhere, you know, I would think between four, five, and six, maybe seven. Well, see, I'm seven. And you're seven. The, the seven is not even going to not even touch the cost, but it'll help. Okay, just so people know what we're talking about, option seven is a three hundred and fifty dollar flat fee plus one dollar per square foot. So on that thirty eight hundred square foot house, mm -hmm. the it's total right now the total three. is forty one hundred bucks. Yeah. Now, I mean, when you're building a thirty eight hundred square foot house yeah Mo most of those 3800 square foot houses are in the millions and in an extra four thousand dollars is is just a 
whatever, changing your That's, carpet color in one I room. Was say, thing, you know, drapes in one room. Yeah, you know, maybe a refrigerator. <laughs> it's a refrigerator. Nice one. A nice one, but but that's going to go in a in yeah. a. That's what's going to go in a four thousand square foot house. And again, does it cost the town four thousand dollars to oversee this? Maybe not everyone, but on average, I I bet between absolutely Carol's salary, Jade's salary, Sean, and you, mm -hmm. you spend time on these, and then Ray is involved mm -hmm. in in some of these that aren't compensated for by the builder. Right. And I know he's supposed to be, but there are times I know when you, when you, you know, you hey, have, have a quick get question. It, right. Yeah. A question type 15 thing. minute review. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, can you come out and look at this right. rock right. wall or lack of rock wall? Well, and <laughs> these, <laughs> these homes are only going to get more difficult to engineer and more difficult to site manage. The higher the elevation, the more ledge we hit, the harder they're going to be for site administration and internal in administration on these things. They're not one acre lots. They're not, they're not even a half acre flat lot. And you know, we're talking about quarter acre, 4,000 foot homes on a 12% grade or even higher than that in some cases, you know? They're just going to get more difficult to manage and administer internally. And, and another thing I learned driving around with Sean is it's not all um, new construction that we went up into places like Coolidge Falls, mm -hmm. um, Clearbrook, and saw some of the renovations that were going on that, that also included some serious site work. Absolutely. You know, retaining on, on, walls on mm -hmm. slopes like this with retain. I mean, and, and again, something like something like those, um, there needs to be a fee structure that that because the one that we looked at, um, I believe that was an existing. I don't know if they expanded the footprint. We couldn't tell if that was new concrete. But anyway, if they expanded it, it was only by a little bit. It was a pre-existing house or yeah, unit, whatever. And um, but they were doing some site work. So the extension on the house might have been, you know, maybe a couple of hundred square feet. Like right. The it was the site work. Well, and maybe now that you're saying that, maybe we also look in this permanent application, like I said, I did do a permanent and I thought most of it seemed relatively fair, but maybe right now for the retaining walls, we're only collecting the escrow for the retaining wall, which is essentially a great corpus review on it to making sure the engineered plans that we're receiving are actually being engineered accurately. We might want to up that up for administrative costs as well, where it's 1500 for the escrow account, but it's another 500 for site inspections, internal site inspections or something along those lines as well, because that's where we're running into most of our issues right yeah. now. That's where Sean would come that's in. That's where Sean would come in. Yeah. So maybe we include that as in addition to the single family home additions and increases, the retaining walls would be a $2,000 Fifteen hundred for the escrow and five hundred for administrative. That's not a bad idea. That's right. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. See what they have to say. I mean, I have a meeting. I have a meeting this week. Yeah. Right. Wednesday night. Um, I can put something together for them. I'd love to bring the the. On the back end. No. What have you got in the back of yours? Something. That no. Ah. Oh, that's see. what it was. Oh, I'm look, I have the our whole permit application. Oh, okay. oh yeah. So <laughs> I can I show Jack. Don't let him see it. I can clean this up to take away the first three options and then add a section for the retaining walls alone and give that to you for the planning board on Wednesday if you'd like to share that with them. Yep. Okay. I can do that. No option seven. Can, best one. Can, can we can we add on to this? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Um, right now, we ch we have a this, I believe there's a section in there on on irrigation systems. That's in our water and sewer tap fees. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're running into that as well. Well, here's here's another thing that that you know. 
some houses are being sold without irrigation systems mm -hmm. because they don't have them hooked up. There might be lines buried in the lawn. There might be pipes running over into the house, mm -hmm. but they're not hooked up. So they don't have an irrigation system. And then when Joe homeowner moves in, he hires someone to hook this pipe onto this pipe, in. and mm -hmm. and, and the, the town is never got aware the tap of that. They've never paid the tap fees, right? And and you know when one person does it, it's a oh well, but when doesn't start doing it, that's that's a that's a a burden on the water system that's not being compensated. It absolutely for. is. Um, What's the what's the fees? Right now, uh, an irrigation system is uh, outside irrigation for a residential is four points. Um, so that would be uh, one fifty a point. It four points. It's uh one fifty. It's one twenty for water. Is it? Um, outside. Yeah. So it's one twenty for water. So that would be what five hundred bucks. Four eighty. Yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, yeah, come use it up. Yeah, come on, get get in front of the mic, Sean. <laughs> Turn it on too. Well, expanding on what you're talking about, OJ, is uh, you know, the irrigation is an issue. Uh just tie in after you get your LUCC and you can run all you want. Uh hot tubs is another one. I mean, hot tubs, they're not prevalent or not clean, but they're roughed. And then you go by and see a hot tub in a driveway today, and that's a, I think it's a thousand forty dollars worth of points just for that one hot tub. And they're going in everywhere, so you're really shortchanging yourself on that as well, from a water point of view. You know, you really start to going to impact your water at some point here, consumption or or ability to. Um, but now. Hot tubs are something that can be built in the future. So you could build a house and have a house and then decide in three years you want to put a hot Absolutely. tub in. Yeah. And at that point, the town should be collecting. And if somebody drives by and sees a hot tub that's not been paid for, that's when the town should need to send a bill, literally send a bill to the homeowner and, and collect on that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> a lot of times you don't see them because they're behind the house. Yeah. Right. right. So it's a it's a honesty and a man and a management issue. Uh, how, how do you how do you negate that as you go? I don't know the answer to that at this point. Aside from when you rough it, you rough it. And the if it's roughed in, there's the ability to hook up. You should if be it's paying roughed in, for it. Should be paid for, right? Because if I roughed in an extra washer and dryer hookup. Mm -hmm. Or washer, dry wood, right. hook up in my house. I should pay for that. Well, whether I've hooked a washing machine up to we, it or not. We run into that with like the basements, like well, where they space. they rough in the space in the basement for an extra bathroom downstairs at some point. But we're not gonna we're not gonna finish the basement quite yet. Well, you're gonna pay for that rough in. Absolutely, absolutely. I I would like to see if we can incorporate that into the policy. If if anything is is roughed in, stubbed out, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Jacuzzi, you know, jacuzzi, hot tub, mm -hmm. indoor or outdoor. Irrigation. Irrigation. Extra bathrooms. Mm -hmm. If if it's there and, and there's water leading to it, but even if it's not hooked right. up, plugged in, I think you, you, we should charge for that. Pay for the rough end. Because we know that there's, there's more people who are uh, doing it without notifying the town. Mm-hmm. Then there will be people who have a million dollar right. house with stubbed in hot tub who never hook it up. Well, and I'll be I'll be honest. Very small percentage of the water and sewer tap fees we receive right now have irrigation systems as a charge. Right. You know those beautiful homes up there in their green grass all are having an irrigation system. Sure, we can include let we'll include language on the water and sewer tap fee that says something along the lines of that. Uh, rough-ins need to be included in the total calculation, whether hookup or something is happening immediately or right after the LUCC. But I also think we should maybe look at the point system for the outdoor irrigation systems and potentially hot tubs. Okay. Well, the hot tubs, you know, and I think we all, excuse me, um, when I bought my home, I had a hot tub. Um, you know, 
killed it <clears throat> once a year. What monitor the chemicals? So I never changed the water. Um, the line, there was a 220 dedicated circuit to it, which was under my deck, so nobody ever would have seen it. I got rid of it because I was the only one using it. It was costing money in the winter time to sit there and what have you. But, you know, I mean, it's not costing the town a lot of money as far as water usage goes. Uh, maybe some people that, uh, you know, have them as part of their Airbnbs, um, you know, we could ask Granicus to run through the 400 Airbnbs. How many of them declare that they have hot tubs? I don't know if that's something we could ask them to do. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I don't, you know, I don't see it being such a big personal deal as far as the town goes. I will tr totally leave tr uh, Jack, traditionally, I think one of the requirements from the hot water hot tub company, the recommendations are at least quarterly to change your waters. Okay. And it's on the, on the use. So that's, that's the, I think the issue you get it. You're going to change it at least four times a year, maybe six. What's the capacity? Uh, of majority? About 500 gallons at a pop. So you're talking 3000 gallons, maybe a year, a, a year. Uh, I don't know which impact the 3000 gallons yeah. a year on you know, consumption is, you know, times 10 times a hundred times, times, times a thousand. How many showers? Yeah. So, I mean, it adds up pretty quick. Um, I just got to caution you on that. Okay. <laughs> No. We had meters. I mean, we could know how many times they were filling them. Yeah, and it, it meters metering when you had meters that it would, it would basically balance out for you. Yeah. Uh, the ones that really don't care or don't want to play and just do it afterwards, you know, make make it tough for the ones that are trying to follow the system. Uh, you know, do, do you penalize? Uh, put something out there and say, hey, look, if you put these in afterwards, and you're gonna come to us, so we're gonna come to you and say we. You know, you guys got to have to file for this. Is it a simple one-to-one? -one? You should have done it before. They said, oh, you didn't catch me now. You caught me later. Or do you, you know, you could throw out a 10X factor, but that would be astronomical, but that would get somebody's attention. Now, is it 10X? No, it shouldn't be. But it, it should be something out there to say, hey, look, file accordingly, or you run the risk of being penalized for not filing as you should after the fact. Yeah, you think extra toilet right now? And like, I think I don't disagree totally with you, Jack, that hot tubs probably aren't our biggest issue. But as far as the irrigation systems go, we're only charging four points for an irrigation system. We charge two points for an additional toilet. How much more water do you think those irrigation systems are using than an additional mm -hmm. toilet? Probably a hell of a lot more. Yeah. Dishwashers use the same thing. Irrigation right. system yeah. use three months. Right. Well, and you know, Appliances are more energy efficient nowadays, you know, like we are using less water than we probably have in the past with old, but still, you got a bunch of beautiful, well manicured lawns and well manicured homes using water, um, and we know that we don't meter and we know that we have have many a droughts in the past, you know, decade or so I think it's just something that needs to maybe be reevaluated as well. I mean, it's as you as I said, Karina, the, the local taxpayer is being burdened for this um, influx. And, th and that's what you're probably trying to negate is the burden being passed on to the, the general taxpayer. You want it taken care of at the source of the cause. And that's what I think we need to get to. It, it's just hard getting to that point. What would you think of putting Maybe maybe changing that the, the points or whatever, but but even more importantly, putting in a, a provision that if you um, are paying for that in up front, it's X points. So it's four points for mm -hmm. top, is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, four points for irrigation. Irrigation. System. System. Yep. Okay. We may want to look at the points or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what if we said? If you have an, irrig an operable irrigation system that you've not paid for, mm -hmm. that is now 14 points mm -hmm. or some other number. Right. You yeah. Get the attention. Yeah. Um, and, and I just wonder if we, you know, made that clear to homeowners that, that you know, if you pay now, this is what you're paying. Right. If you try to get away with it and you get caught, you're going to be paying a multiple of that. that that's the problem. You're going to start having. Yeah. So this. The other thing too is, I mean, make it known to the contractors too when oh, they're absolutely. doing it that 
up front, you know, not, like you said, the homeowner wants it, the contractor says, hey, my butt could be on the line here because I'm not following the town. They say to me, screw you, screw the town. We're not letting you go. I'm not going to give you a fit. The city of Lebanon, it's funny you say that. So um, the city of Lebanon has right on their building permit fee schedule. If work requiring a residential or commercial building permit under chapter 36 is commenced or completed prior to the issuance of such permits, the applicable, the app, look, I can't speak. I'm skipping over that word. Building permit fee shall be increased by 25% for a companies or individuals for such occurrence by 50% for the second occurrence and by 100% for any subsequent occurrence. And they're the one with the $14,000 building permit fees. I, li I like that. Get you should put that in. I mean, that's right. Quick. Do we need to be that extreme? Who knows? Hey. But it gets your attention. It gets I their attention. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Again, you're, you're trying to put the burden on the, the issue at hand at the time and right. not the taxpayer. Right. right. If you're doing something without a permit and we catch you doing it without a permit, your fee is going to get greater because of because of that. No, I love that. I'll add that to my little thing. For discussion at the planning board level. And, and, and yeah. See what the planning board says. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. Mark okay. it up from there. Yeah. No, I like that. Okay. And in cute, and then also including the lane grip language for rough ends. Anything that's roughed in is going to be considered fully constructed. Yeah. If you're paying for anything. You're going to use it. Right. Stuffed in, right. stuffed in, whatever, yeah. Well, and, and to be fair, in all fairness, uh, some of these homes are being built as spec homes, right? And they're then hence being sold. If I home for X number of million in dollars and I knew that I had a irrigation system that just needed to be hooked up and a hot tub that just needed to be purchased, guess what I would do? I'd buy that hot tub and I'd put that irrigation system working and I wouldn't even think twice to go to the town because it was already there. Right. So... It, it's not, you know, we're not saying that they're trying to sneak the system, you know. I right. Think that's the case is that, that the, the builder doesn't want to pay for it. And the new homeowner's coming in and saying, well, let's hook up the irrigation system. Right. Yeah. It, it, you know, there's not, not a finger to point at a, a right. that somehow we need to get. We have to recoup that. Know. Right. And, and I think the irrigation systems are, at least in my mind, the bigger thing. So, oh, great. Yeah. Consumption know. wise. Consumption wise. Consumption. Yes. Yes. Right. When you're trying to build a million gallons of water a day. No. Right. I mean, I've owned a hot tub and know what it takes to fill it, but I've also forgot to shut my water off at night and the water's running. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time, but I have done it. Uh, if you lived at my house, you wouldn't be showering the next day because your well would run. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Right. right. If your well made dry, you, well, you don't do that. You don't make that yeah. mistake. You don't make that mistake again. Right. If you go out in the morning and it's running and you're just like, ah, oh, damn. I'm seized mm -hmm. up. Well, well. Mm -hmm. Forget again a little bit later. Right. All right. I'll put a little thing together and put it in a little cleaner fashion and I'll make sure that the phone awesome. board has it for Thank Wednesday. You for bring it up on other business on Wednesday night. I don't know if we'll get into a full discussion. But sure. I hand them that and kind of review it. Maybe we can put it on the agenda for the following meeting to actually discuss it. Yeah, and we don't have any, like I said, we're hoping to make this change for January 1, just so it's clean. So we have three months to, or two months, well, no, three, to schedule a public hearing and just have to have one, but it's got to be noticed in the paper, you know, the, the whole spiel, but. Do it all at once. Let's see, jacuzzi. Absolutely. Fees. The fees, yeah. Do it once, and, and banging out. Okay, retaining thank walls. You. Mm -hmm. Retaining yeah. walls. Yep. Any sort of land use fee. We'll do like a land use fee revision. Okay. Still not letting me know if I tear my cabinets out for the kitchen. Well, that's okay because you're replacing that in kind, so that wouldn't require anything. You put a you put a uh, you put a nice maker in there. You know, it might be a different story. Hmm. What if I have to replace my refrigerator and this one has bottle filler and did your stuff. previous one have a hookup to the water no. system well then you would because technically it's another water system hookup isn't it i don't know that's a good question do we have refrigerators on there because i'm no seriously i bought a refrigerator yesterday that's being <laughs> delivered on <laughs> <and> friday <laughs> you might get a bill on the mail <laughs> but 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 I, hook it up. I have to pay it i should pay it so uh, like well we do have a commercial ice makers water fountain water coolers bubbler so that's what i think it would go under is a water commercial this no commercial. i mean no that's not we have commercial ice ice maker next line water fountains water coolers and bubblers 
What about going? I don't have a water fountain, a water cooler, or a bubbler. Yeah. It's a bubbler. If it's coming, if you now have water coming out of your fridge, you have a water bubbler coming in your fridge, out of your fridge. I also have ice coming out. That's of it. half a point. You would owe us sixty bucks. I also have ice coming out of it. Well, you. But I'm not commercial. I'm residential. No, but this is water. Well, this is terminal. this is residential water fountains, water coolers, and bubblers. To clarify terminology at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll we'll send you a bill for sixty bucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get to in the weeds on things we don't have the resources we're we're dealing with the big issues right now honestly if right now i open my freezer take out the ice that i filled from the sink and froze the freezer and put in the glass and i fill it at the sink mm -hmm. my refrigerator is going to hook into that line at the sink you don't use same water water. same ice not using any more and i guess so i guess that's true that's how I listen i can argue it Conversely, i'll try to argue uh, it go into a new lucc at the end and we can start to clean up the Okay, what did you actually build? You see, you know, three dishwashers in the house at two, at different points, and they filed for one. Yeah. Or you see, you know, two kitchens and or, or things like that. Sure. So you make note of that. That's where you want to be catching those charges, for, right? Even if it's rough, because they're going to be using it, and at that point, you're not going to be going back. It'd be gotcha. no different than going into your house afterwards, knocking on the door and say, can I come in and see if we got an ice maker? Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, okay, have a nice life. You know? <laughs> right. We're also on a, the same page, but on a side note, we're also, right now, our, our building permits are only good for a year. But no home is being built Still. in yeah. one year in a 12-month cycle in this community. So we are uh, discussing, we're potentially moving the, uh, the, the permit term for two years. Because we think that's a more or less, more realistic time frame for someone to actually build a house. Um, that would be a, a selectman. Uh, you know, I think it's actually it doesn't even need to go to a selectman. So they just do it at the front. Yeah. Look at single family homes that no. Built. This is a yeah. this is a town manager. I think selectman issue. Code enforcement. I had to do that when I was doing my house. I had to yeah. get an extension. Well, and it's also administratively, it's a lot of work for us to be get an extension. For permits when we don't they have barely have foundations in the ground right. you know three three extensions possibly four right right now to, to wow. get off the ground i mean i need i had to get i had to do one right only because the, the building season is not it, we right we're not living in a right. sunny community where we have 12 months a year to build right i think just today jay six or eight yeah. I will able to open right. so got four years. Right. So it's just, yeah, it, it makes our it. workload more manageable. Yeah. To your paperwork. Uh, okay. Absolutely. What else you want to fix? Seriously, you want to put that there? It on Next I think level. the additional administrative schedule real is huge. The irrigation things that are going to make a big difference. Um, but yeah, if something in-house. else jumps out, I will. We'll we'll, we'll go through it. The planning board on Wednesday and just catch us. Yeah, up maybe we'll go through a tier T on Wednesday afternoon. Sure. Okay. Okay. Perfect. We have something for Wednesday night for me to pass out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Thank awesome. You, Thank you. All right. Do you want to move on to the? I'll town keep on talking. Yeah. Town <laughs> town <laughs> um. So finally, we will be making the transition to .gov starting next week, October second. Um. So there will be a buffer period uh, during which all of our .org emails will be forwarded to the new addresses. But CC has suggested that we all add a note to the end of our or to our email signature line just to help get the word out and make sure you know that the new address is gov so that's a long time coming uh grafton county arpa fund so i did reach out to the county commission uh the county administrator and unfortunately at this time the commissioners are going to be obligating the majority of those funds to affordable housing and they do not have any available to offer municipalities so um she said however they agreed to let us know if there are any changes but right now they are doing it on a county level they're dedicating all those funds on a county level to affordable housing 
Do you know how they uh, uh, giving it to affordable housing? Like, is it to individual developers or towns or? They're not giving it to municipalities. No. There is no application process for municipalities right. at right now. I said, even if it's affordable housing, she said no. No. Okay. All right. Yet the state had some. I've heard the gentleman out here. Uh, the state has funds through their own housing finance program, yes, for affordable housing, but the, this was the county's surplus opera funds, yeah. I think um, Jerry Stringham came in and said they had $2 million that right. wasn't obligated, right. and they're not obligating it to, to any of the municipalities at this point. Um, Court updates. The Chouinard hearing has been rescheduled for Friday, December 30th. Happy New Year at 2 p.m. in Plymouth District Court. So um, that's just get on your calendars. It's, yeah. Okay. It's crazy. I know. What's um, it again? Friday? Friday, December 30th. That's what my phone was. That's not a, it's not a Friday. Friday. Monday is the 30th. Well, then let me double check my email with Jason so I can make sure that I am telling you the accurate information. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh, it is. He, he says the court has a scheduled for December 30th at two o'clock. So I Monday. added Friday and it was Monday. So Monday, December 30th? Yes. Yes. Oh, you said Plymouth? At Plymouth? At Plymouth District Court, correct. And that's at 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock, yes. And then in that same uh, conversation with Jason, he also said, also uh, as a reminder, that the Wood jury selection is Monday, January 6th at 9 a.m., had that on there. And then the trial uh, is scheduled for Tuesday, the 21st through the 29th. Oh, I had Monday on there. Too. It was Monday. At the court didn't realize that that's a federal holiday and they'll be closed. So it starts at that's Tuesday. Why. Yeah. So Tuesday yeah. through the following Monday? Tuesday through the following Monday. Okay. And Tuesday's start time is still 11. Well, the the, your paper says through January 29th, which is actually be the Wednesday. That'd be it. So that's that's the new that's so the new the 21st, date. first away Monday. The 21st. So it's January the 21st 29th through January 29th. Okay. Just don't look at my days of the week. Okay, just that's throw those. Nice. <laughs> Gosh, I have it on here twice. Okay. It blows me away that they've got scheduled seven days for that. Let's see. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, Riverfront Park, uh, as part of the application process, we need to hold a public hearing for the EPA Brownsfield grant. Um, so we have it scheduled for our regularly scheduled meeting on October 21st. Okay. And we'll get that publicized. Um, Ray's going to help us, Jane, with the language that we need. Yeah. Okay. Um, Campus World RFPs, they are due on Friday at three o'clock. Um, are we planning to meet that afternoon or do you wanna meet on Monday to begin the review? Unfortunately, um, I am unsure if I can stay much later than the three o'clock time on Friday. Um, 
So I didn't know. Yeah, they do. They're due Friday at three. This Friday. Yeah. Applications. Um, like paper in electronic form as well as paper form. It's just... I don't remember what we said. They don't say. So I imagine they're coming paper form. Um, I could scan them all and email them all to you so you could review them over the weekend and then we could powwow on Monday if that works for you all. Or I'm gone. I'm in court all day Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday? But you could powwow and I or, I mean day. Wednesday. We could do later in the week. Yeah, I, can I mean, I just feel like if we day. meet on Friday, we're not going to, it's going to take us hours to go, to even go. Weekend. Yeah, yeah, Me yeah. too. Yeah. Do it either Monday or Tuesday or, or Wednesday, or whatever. whatever. Right. I wouldn't even mind, mind meeting during the day. You said you've done Monday, Tuesday, you're tied up. Yeah, correct. I mean, if we did it like a Wednesday meeting, even during the day, with one item on the agenda, open to the public, mm -hmm. but not discuss other stuff that we typically do. Yeah. Just, just, me, just yeah. limited to look at it. Yeah. Are you available on Wednesday the second? Yeah, after noon time, I am. Okay, we could do. I could do noon. Noon on. Second. Second. Well, let's say tentatively Wednesday the 2nd at noon. And then just let us know okay. if you can or not. Because I just think it's going to take us some time well, to go through the individual get. merits. Yeah. I hope we get so many that it takes us two days. <laughs> you can. Um, okay, well, I'll confirm with an email or text message later in the week so you know what time we're meeting. Thank you. Yep, no problem. And then the uh, Lincoln-Woodstock Joint BOS meeting. Uh, Woodstock has agreed to hold a joint BOS meeting here in Lincoln on October 7th, which will be our first meeting in October, and Linwood Ambulance will be on the agenda because they would like to come and present to both boards at the same time. Okay. Is it in presenting? Is it like the regular budget, capital and operating budget, or is it more than? It's. I. I believe it's going to be. A, I don't. I don't believe they're presenting their like budget request. I believe they have kind of the present, an overview of kind of what they do, where they are now versus where they were, you know, ten years ago, and. I think it's I think it's in preparation for an increase ask in the 2025 budget. I did. My words, not theirs. <laughs> um, and the only other thing I have, and I will hopefully end on a high note, is that uh, uh, very late this evening. Um, I received a email from Andrea um, uh, Ansville Allen, who is our uh, representative at USDA. And she says that um, she needed one more thing for me because for some reason her Adobe wouldn't let her access some of the hyperlinks in the uh, application we have. But she said she's going to start the underwriting process of the grant this week. So hopefully that is one step closer to securing these funds. If they're underwriting the grant, think right. we are you know, on the right path so awesome very good news how much is that one million dollars one million dollars that we've already spent to be clear and that's all i have this evening for you all right Everything I had was either part of the South Peak water tank discussion or the land use schedule discussions. Mine too. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, Jack, do you have anything? No, sir. All right, then I'll open up for public participation.
When you're going to give us a report. Nice. Yeah. Come on up to the yeah. It's got to be brief. Um, a week ago, last week, we had a joint session of the trustees of the library with Carol Riley. Everything I'm going to tell you now is 100% agreed upon by everybody of every one of the five trustees and Carol. Okay. Okay. So we're all in agreement on where we think we are. I just want to communicate back to you where we think we are. The first project, there are three projects here. I'm just going to briefly go over. First project is the expansion of the library building. Uh, in 2022, the trustees um, recommended that a line item be added to the capital improvement budget for expansion of the library. $28,000 a year is being put away from 2022 until 2028. And I wanna be clear that there is nothing on the board right now about that project or any thoughts on the part of the trustees or Carol to do anything about expanding the library other than this line item on the CIP. So 2022 to 2028, we will have accrued $192,000 uh, for something. At that point, the trustees will evaluate what we do next. Do we continue to accrue money? You know, what what type of project is it that we need to have done? Um, they recognize that there's no land around there that they can really do much building, but there has been zero thought on the part of the trustees as to what a expansion of the library project must be like. The only thing the trustees have agreed to is to put the line item into capital improvement budget and to accrue $28,000 a year in there. That's all they've agreed to. The idea of what that money is gonna be spent on or what type of expansion of the building is all in the future. Right now, they aren't expecting to do anything until 2028. At that point, we've got to decide, do we continue to accrue money or do we have a building project that we need to present back to the town as to what needs to be done? So there, are, there is absolutely no thought about expansion going up, down, sideways, any improvements to the building beyond just getting this annual contribution to the CIP. That's where that project stands um, right at the moment. Um, again, they they realize they don't have any land to expand. Uh, there's been talk about maybe buying a piece of the historical society's land, but all of that is speculation. There is nothing that they've done that, that's precise. That's where they are. Any? Do you have any questions about that? No, but Thank you very much for bringing that up and stating yeah. that at a public meeting and, and um, kind of clearing up some of that confusion that we discussed last week. I want to say the trustees are all in agreement and Carol is in agreement. Okay. They raised their right hands and solemnly swore. <laughs> no, we didn't make them do that. <laughs> they are in agreement. The only thing that they've agreed on is this VIP contribution. There are two other projects in process that I just want to touch on because of the financial aspect of it. One is the front steps. You've been, it's been discussed with you, the need to rebuild the front steps of the, uh, of the library. They were really in pretty distress. Um, the initial estimate was $62,000. That was rejected out of hand. We went back to the community last year in March, uh, this year in March, and got a $30,000 warrant approved by the town for this project. The actual cost of the project is coming out around $40,000. So we've got a $10,000 issue. What the trustees think 
is happening right now. And this really depends on your agreement with it and you guys. Um, what they think is happening with this is that we've got $30,000 from the warrant that can be used to pay this bill. The status of the project, by the way, is it's still ongoing. There's some final work that has to be done and we haven't received a final invoice yet. We expect that invoice to be around $40,000. So there's a $10,000 gap there between the $30,000 warrant we did last March and what the cost of this project is probably going to come in at. What we think is going to happen is that the $10,000 will be borrowed from the CIP. There is no line item in the CIP today for a front steps project. But if we could borrow the $10,000 and then perhaps do another warrant at the next annual meeting for the additional 10,000, that money would be put back into the CIP. So I don't know if that's the most effective way of paying for it. I'm, we're, we're really talking about is just the invoice now looks like it's gonna be about $40,000. Yeah, the, so, go ahead. the plan was to take the surplus, the additional $10,000 out of the library building's capital reserve fund. That has always been the plan. Um, whether or not you want to put forth a warrant article to put that back in, I guess would be at the purview of the trustees. But if I don't have my CIP in front of me, yeah. do you? wouldn't it make more sense just to play catch up with the CIP next year? Yeah, that's what I yeah. would suggest. Just taking it right out of the money that's already in the CIP, the twenty-eight thousand building improvements that was already in years, it's been, what, three right. Years, it's because been. what they did, what what we did, Wayne, during the CIP process is. Carol had half a dozen projects listed under the library building uh, CIP. We took the balances out of all those other projects and put it in Fine. and combined them and put it in with the expansion of the library to, uh, to account for some of the overages in the stairs or whatever project, unknowns. the unknowns or whatever project they wanted to. So I guess if, the trustees wanted to put a Warren article on for the additional 10. They could, but I don't necessarily think it's necessary. So that I'm absolutely clear on what you're saying. Uh, we've got $30,000 from last March's warrant. That's a given. That's a given. We need another 10,000 approximately when the final invoice comes in, which could be any day from now. Sure. That 10,000 is going to come out of the capital improvement budget somewhere the library building capital improvement budget. library building capital okay yeah it's going to come out of what we're accruing in there this hundred ninety two thousand you got it ten thousand dollars less mm -hmm. so we're going to take that money out of that and pay the invoice yes what we were thinking is that because there is no line item for the steps and it's really up to you guys and the capital improvement committee what they want us to do, but we would be happy. We would be just as happy if we did a warrant next spring for $10,000 and put that $10,000 back into the capital improvement budget. Or we could take the 10,000 out of the capital improvement budget and just leave it out. You know, I'd be more in favor of just leaving it out. And then down the road, if, if there is a building expansion um, that we just increase it 5,000 this year, 5,000 next year, make up that $10,000 if it's necessary. Well, right now we're we're accruing at about 28,000 right. a year in the building project to 2028. Right. So, so rather than ha us being obligated to pay back that $10,000, you're saying, let's just take it out of the, uh, the, uh, the $190,000 so, that we're gonna have in there. Well, yeah, and then like I say, so. Next year, maybe we increase, maybe we increase the CIP line item for that from 28 to 33,000. That's 5,000 you've gained up the 10 that you've expended. It just eliminates that second step of having to have that warrant oh, off or be voted on that town. Yeah. yeah. Could also, if you wanted to, if the library trustees were um, passionate, passionate about making sure that 10 grand goes back in next year, when the budget committee reviews the CIP requests, it can be requested that 
rather than the 28 that you're putting in this year for the library budget, you put in 38 or 33 or whatever you may be to make up some of that difference. What we're trying to say is we're not trying to steal money out of the CIP that doesn't deserve to be taken out. Oh, that's no. no that's, oh, no. That's exactly that's what, what it's there for. That's what it's that's, there that's for. what it's there for, Wayne. So the way the CIP works is all those 107 projects we have, all those little tiny line items, I don't want to say this because it's going to sound callous, but they don't mean anything. What means something is the actual capital reserve account and how town meeting voted to establish that. So your library building capital reserve was established to take care of any of the library building's needs. The small little project line items help for you to budget for some of those small needs but they are interchangeable. They can move around, they can eliminate, you can add new projects on. Really what truly matters is how that, war, how that capital reserve account was created, which was created for the library building, and that can be used in any way, shape or form for that library as needed. We're not trying to create an awkward situation for the town by asking for another $10,000 right. warrant next spring, which might, a difficult concept. I just think, yeah, I think it's a hurdle that so, you don't need so to do. Right. Eliminate that, and I will talk to the trustees, and I'll say what we're going to do is take whatever we need, the 10000 we need, out of the CIP. It will stay out of the CIP. Right. We and then maybe next year during the... So you Maybe next year during the CIP process, let's remember we took that $10,000 and say, this year we'd like to propose rather than 28,000 going in, we'd like to propose 38 going in or 35 going in or whatever you guys see fit to make up for yeah. the expenses you did this year. There, yeah. E what even if you did. Do, do things right and with consideration yeah. for what the town is. You're going to have a lot to present to the town next year. Yeah. Slipping in another $10,000 warrant that might be confusing. If that's a problem at all for you guys, we don't need to do that. Yeah, that yeah. that would be a problem, I, I would see. And, you know, for me, the simple way to do it is none of this money is being anticipated being spent until 2028. If you did $2,000 a year extra for five years, just bump the 28 up to 30. 30 right. Yeah. It, 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 there's the problem's going to go away. And, and to be honest, that 197000 whatever that number was, um, that's just that's just a target based on not even knowing what the expansion is right. going to be. Right. It's like like that's we might be ten thousand dollars short of that target, but that target might not even be the real number when it gets to a right. final plan. So to be clear, the trustees feel very strongly that we should have been and are accruing money in the capital improvement project for the expansion of the library. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have no idea what that right. means. Right. It could be reorganizing some space internally, right. which we don't know. And well, we probably won't even consider that until 2028. Yeah, yeah. So it's not something that the library is getting ready to come back to you guys and say, we got a $300,000 right. project. Yet. And, and Wayne, just, just so you know, too, God forbid this doesn't happen, but if something catastrophic happens at the library, let's say their HVAC system fails, and you need a whole new HVAC system, you need new uh, boilers and whatever it is, AC can, and if that comes to $15,000, it's going to come from the library building capital reserve. It's gonna come from that project line item for building expansion because right. that takes precedence over an expansion decades down the road. Got it. Yeah. Right. We're, on the same. We're on the same page, yeah. If they needed a fence. <laughs> but whatever, if there's something here. catastrophic that happens that takes precedent, that's where that money is going to be spent. Third project I'm just going to mention briefly is the electric signboard project. You probably have heard about that vaguely. Mm -hmm. The plan now is that the signboard, this electric signboard, which has not been ordered, it has not been approved. In fact, the project has been rejected by our zoning committee temporarily we're appealing it and asking them to reconsider certain points that they want to impose so right now that project is is going nowhere i don't believe it's gone to the zba yet okay so i think i think procedurally how it happened carol had to put in an application carol bont 
how to deny it because it doesn't meet the zoning regulations, the next step would be for it to go in front of the zoning board. That's the, the appeal process. Correct. Yes. Just to be clear, though, with that electric signboard project, the Friends of the Library have already raised $10,000. We expect that project will require probably another $12,000, and the Friends of the Library will raise that. So we're not asking the town. Uh, it's all going to be raised over time by the Friends of the Library, whatever the amount is to, to purchase that electric project, or that electric sign. So the important thing is just getting the approval from the town as to where we're locating it and is everybody comfortable, the neighbors and everything with, with that going on. But there is no plan to charge the town for that. The, uh, the um, friends of the library are planning to pick up the whole bill for that. And if, if there's something to consider, that's if the ZBA approved it, if it was denied at the ZBA level because of neighborhood opposition or something like that, then you'd have to take it to the next step. Okay. I don't see any. What would the next step be? There is no. It's just no, no. no. It's, it's, it's court. Yeah. Court. court would be the next yeah. step. Yeah. I don't see any passion on the part of the police to drive this thing through this, this project. We think that the electric sign would be a help and a big benefit to the library. But it's not a crucial issue. It's not like the front steps that were corroding away and needed to be repaired. Right, right. I I was unaware of this project. Is it is it like going to be mounted to the building? Or no, it's freestanding, free standing in front, mm -hmm. both sides, two two sides. Yes, where the sign is now in yeah. the library. That's going to be replaced with an electronic sign that can be controlled inside, and printing put on it. Oh, uh, okay. Whether that really helps. The goal of communication. I don't know, but Can the sign the be on all night. No, um, we'll have to see what the rules are. I mean, there will be rules that will come out with the approval process. Right now, we're just in the approval process. There's been no attempt to purchase that or go forward with it at this point. Yeah, I believe. I believe, giant, I believe Carol's. Gonna, I believe Carol's oh, proposal was from. I believe Carol's proposal was from dusk till dawn, or when the library opened, the sign would go on, and when the library closed, the sign would go off. We'll, we'll let the ZBA handle that. Yeah. And we are open to whatever the town says the rules are with regard to the use of it. And again, if, if the town doesn't want us to do that in the final analysis, I don't think it's that big a deal. I think a lot of signs are going in that direction, honestly, even if they don't change. Um, during the day, you know what I mean? It's not like a, it changes every 10 minutes to say something different. It looks it's just the same thing all day, every day. Yeah, it's it, an electronic signage, yeah. When there's a holiday, we're closed today or something like that. And it just, but a lot of businesses are going to that. I've seen quite a few of them, well, south, but. What did you say? You're going to have a signage here on this? <laughs> That's right. We got enough issues with signs already. Yeah. yeah. I mean, thank you for thank bringing you for all this. Update. I appreciate the update. So I will let the trustees know that the uh, Front Steps project, that extra money, will probably just stay coming out of the yes. CIP. Improvement yeah. Yep. And will not no. force the town or ask the town to do another law, another warrant. Any questions on on the big on the project? I just want to be absolutely clear that the trustees have never discussed what that build an expansion project would be, how it would be conducted, where the land would come from, where the money would come from, other than they unanimously want to have this accrual in the CIP for something oh. down the road in the future. That's all the decision they've made. Understood. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Wayne, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Wayne. All right. There's no other... Um, I, who's on I iPhone? Think... Whoever's on iPhone, do you have anything... Any comment? If not, do we have anything fine. in non-public? Um, if you'd like, I can give you a brief update on the uh, uh, last uh, discussion we had in non-public under reputation C, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It'll take us five seconds. Perfect. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion to go into non-public under 91A C. 
Yep. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks, man.